Thank you. you heard Michael Collins. Sorry, thank you, Chairman. Right. Thank uh, Catherine Connolly and, uh, Connolly and our group for giving us this uh, time to speak on such an important issue. Changes to the Garda Compensation Scheme have been proposed for a number of years, and therefore this bill is long overdue but welcome. For instance, the current scheme has a requirement to go to the High Court, which is leading to many instances where the legal cost incurred in the proceedings regularly exceed the amount of damages actually awarded. Therefore, we welcome this bill, and it is imperative that it be brought into operation as quickly as possible, as the current legislation is well past its sell-by date and has many defects in it. We welcome the fact that this bill provides a streamlined and simplified method for members of Angarda Shikana who are entitled to compensation to have their case dealt with in a manner that is free from legal manipulations and costly high court cases. Um, this current scheme favours the legal profession as much uh, or more than the members of Angarda Shikana that it is intended to serve. It is hoped that this bill will achieve a greater degree of fairness and transparency for members of the Gardaí. We often uh, hear stories of situations under the current scheme for one Garda receives a certain level of compensation and for one High Court judge, while another Garda uh, with exactly the same personal injuries receives a lesser or greater payout. Therefore, it is hoped that this bill will lead to a greater degree of standardisation of approach through the PIAB. However, one clear omission from our perspective in this bill is the fact that while members of the Criminal Assets Bureau will receive coverage, uh, civilian members of Angarda Shikana who operate, for example, under the functions of criminal assets legislation will not be covered. The, uh, the complete exclusion of civilian uh, staff of Angarda Shikana from the remit of the bill is puzzling, and we are calling uh, on you, Minister, to address this concern. Uh, this will would uh, be particularly important in a changing environment where many technical functions associated with criminal investigations now carried out by members of Angarda Shikana will also be carried out by civilian employees or staff members of Angarda Shikana in future. And when we talk about Angarda Shikana, and I, you know, I, I've been involved in community work in Angarda Shikana down through the years of my own community back in Skull and Goline, uh, and while we are talking as disabled Gary, I would like to acknowledge some of the great work that they do in West Cork. Last weekend I attended the West Cork Garda Youth Awards in Kinsale, and Spa, where it uh, would do your heart good to see so many young people working so hard in their lives to make to, and, and being awarded for doing so, because we often hear something they do wrong. It's very seldom that they, they get an acknowledgement. And in fairness to uh, the Gardaí, they put together a great um, uh, display of, 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 of uh, getting an opportunity for these young people to be awarded. People from Castleton Bear to Bandon to Clannan Kilty to McCroom uh, and Skibreen and places like that, they got awards for their achievements in their local communities. And I'd like to thank the Guards. Uh, a lot of work, I suppose, that goes on to this around behind the scenes. Garda Damon White, Garda Don Davis, uh, Sergeant Eno Callaghan. Um, uh, who work hard with the youth to, to bring out the best in the youth in our, in our communities. And that's what, that's what Gard, Gardy work, that's the Gardy work at its very best. And sorry, also Garda Bridget Hartnett and Sergeant Brendan Fogarty. And I'd also maybe congratulate um, or wish uh, this Chief Superintendent Con Cadigan a very happy upcoming retirement. Uh, it was announced at uh, that function last week. But the Gardy's role in the community is hugely important. And I've always said that down through the years. The, the, the Gardy that's seen in the community, that's working in the community, and I see that in local Gardy like John McCarthy in Kilbritton out there working in the community, always with the people, calling to the neighbours, calling to the elderly people and making them feel secure at home. The same with Jonathan McCarthy back in Belladahab. But we also we have a situation, Minister, that has to be looked into. The, the superintendent's situation in Bantry uh, is, is, is very serious and it hasn't been filled for a number of months. And a superintendent in Bantry is of huge importance to the people of the Bantry uh, Guard District. That's out back into Castle No Mare, into Skull, down to Jimalee, places like that. This is a, t something that can't be continued. There's one other thing, because I know my colleague Deputy McGuire has a lot more to say than I have on this issue, and is a better expert on this issue. Closed guard decisions. Okay, he took that decision a few years ago. You don't want to hear any more about it, Minister, I can well imagine. But I came from a community in Goline where there's a closed guard station, Adrigal, uh, uh, other places like uh, Bell and the Carrigan, places like that. Dim guard stations are still closed. Why aren't they being used to bring Ukrainian people in there and to live there? The community is well willing to work. We don't need to be drawing up super plans that cost us a load of money to do so. We're willing, just give us the guard station. There's seven t rooms, I think, in the Goline guard station to rejuvenate the local community. And he'll dare, he's sending it for profit. Instead of giving it back to the community, I'll cease to discuss any more on this issue. Thanks very much indeed.